Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Doug Adler. I'm a professor of medicine at the University of Utah in Salt Lake City, and I'm also the senior associate editor of gastrointestinal endoscopy. I'm joined today by Dr. Antonio Ladd of Texas Tech University to discuss his paper in gastrointestinal endoscopy, the role of oral cimethicone on adenoma detection rate and other quality indicators of screening colonoscopy, a randomized controlled observer blinded clinical trial. Congratulations on your paper. Thank you very much. Um, so before we get into the details, just tell us where the idea for the study came from. I would say the idea came from the noise in the media about the contamination of scopes being associated with, to the symmetrical use. So, Which we don't do anymore. We're not okay. allowed to instill it. Yes. Well, with rare exception. Yes. So, and, you know, as many other times it happens, you think about an idea and you realize that 20 other people already thought about it. I started doing some literature research about the role of oral semethicone, and I found out that people had used it to improve the preps, but there was no real study talking about does it actually improve our ADR. Mm -hmm. So the, it was conceptualized as, okay, can we improve the prep and therefore improve our ADR? And, you know, in our practice, we used to put cymethicone in the water. Now we're not mm -hmm. doing that, and we're just using cymethicone down through the channel on a mm -hmm. PRN basis if there's excessive bubbling. Exactly. Um, is that your practice as well? Yeah. Um, and you guys were looking at adding oral cymethicone to the polyethylene glycol yes. prep. How did you decide how much cymethicone? Like, what was the dose, and how did you decide when to administer it? So the dosing was based out of the literature that I reviewed. We thought we were going to use a higher dose than most of the other studies had been, uh, used before. And uh, we just decided to add it at the time the patient was drinking the prep. We instructed the patients how to mix it with their go lightly. And at the, the day of the procedure, they came in and we had a questionnaire making sure that they actually followed the instructions. So, right. But the endoscopist was blinded. The endoscopist was not aware of who took semethicone right. and who didn't. Who yes. took semethicone and who didn't. So they actually mixed it with the golightly. They didn't drink it as a separate solution. It was all mixed in it was with all mixed. everything. Yes. Got it. Got it. And how many patients did you enroll? We ended up enrolling 298. And how long did it take to enroll 298 patients? It took us about a year and a half. I was going to say, there's no way you could do that in less than a year. That's yeah. still pretty fast, a year and a half for 298. I had a very great research coordinator that helped me <laughs> through the way. And you, uh, you compared PEG versus PEG plus cymethicone. Yes. The endoscopist was blinded. Did you record the procedures or, or no? No. So the way we did it was the performing endoscopist was instructed on taking how to take pictures, when to take the pictures, and he or she assigned a score at the time mm -hmm. of the procedure. Then those pictures that had been saved were reviewed by a second endoscopist who also was blinded to the preparation, and he or she would give his or her scores, and then we just compared if they were agreeing with each other at the end of the study. So you, you calculated polyp detection rate, adenoma detection rate, the need for additional intraprocedure cymethicone, sequel intubation time, and withdrawal time, and then you were able to calculate the effective procedure time total. Yes. So what were the key findings of the study? Was the cymethicone helpful? So regarding our primary aim, which was, are we going to find more polyps? The answer was no. There was no statistical significance. Which is very surprising. I thought I was gonna, we were going to find a difference because during the time we were recruiting patients, an interesting article came published in Endoscopy uh, where the authors in China had done the same thing and we realized that they had used a much higher use of uh, dose of semethicone. But we had already started the recruiting patients at that time, so we just decided we're just going to go along with our methodology. These guys found that there was an increase in the adenoma detection rate. And it was subsequently followed by a couple of other studies and um, uh, a... God, I'm blanking right now. It's okay. Um, but, the, but the original study, they saw higher adenoma detection rate they with did. the cymethicone, which they is did. like you said, what you expected to see. I was see. expecting to find a difference, and yes. It makes intuitive sense that if there's less bubbling and you see better, you might find more stuff, but it actually turned out not to be the case. No, not for ADR. 
And then did you, did you, uh, you said you tracked additional use of cimethicone, which I assume was higher in the group that did not receive it during the Yeah, prep. so the difference, that was, although it was one of our secondary aims, it turned out to be, I think in my opinion, the, the best selling point of the paper because we realized that people, patients who had drank their cimethicone, in those cases the endoscopists required almost close to 46% less uh, cimethicone during the procedure. Right. So on, so on the one hand, the paper could be read as an argument against using cimethicone, mm -hmm. right? It didn't help. It didn't change your ADR. Mm -hmm. It's not like the, the benefits are not really worth it. The flip side of the coin is when I was reading the paper, I was thinking, well, maybe you don't find more polyps, but maybe you feel like you get a better view and maybe you save a little time trying to suction and clean up bubbles. Like you could almost flip it over and say, well, the primary endpoint of adenoma detection rate didn't really change but maybe it still makes the procedure better and it passes on the cost to the patient, which is not that big, versus if the endoscopy center has to buy cimethicone for every patient, it adds up significantly. I mean, do you like the benefits of cimethicone when you do a colonoscopy? I do like it. Right, but are you, so are you telling patients to use it in their prep or we're, no? We're, we're actually debating, so based uh, uh, on our results, we're deciding whether or not we're gonna give it to everyone as a routine part of their preparation because we wanna to try to minimize the, the intraprocedural use of cimethicone. Like you said, now it's a PR, on a PRN basis, right. but still there's a theoretical risk that there may be some infectious complications from it. So if we can avoid that, then we're doing a, a, a good thing. Right. And again, and the cost of cimethicone over the counter is very low. Yeah. It's only a few dollars. Yes. So again, Granted, I'm the one volunteering to pass that cost on to the patient. It's not a huge no. burden. It's, it's interesting because it's a negative study, mm -hmm. but it's very, very thought-provoking because it makes you think about what you would expect the benefits of cimethicone to be, what they may actually be, and are the other benefits beyond what you thought the primary benefit would be still worth the added cost. Yes. Um, so, you're, so you're in the process of debating at Texas Tech whether or not you mm -hmm. want to have patients routinely use uh, and, and I feel endoscopists felt, felt better because we also scored uh, or captured what they thought what the prep was. And the prep, the, we based the prep on the Boston preparation scale, which was the same in both groups. But we also measured the bubble score, which is based out of a, a previous publication in GIE. We made a little modification to the way we calculated the score, but endoscopists felt comfortable, confident that well, they didn't know who had taken cimethicone or who didn't, right. but the ones who had actually taken it, the endoscopists felt that there was a lot less bubbles and it was proved by our scores and um, inter-observer calculations. Right. So any final thoughts for our viewers before we wrap up or take home messages for them from the study? Well, I think it's a, it's a start point to say, do we really need to start adding this to everyone in the screening colonoscopy or given that we haven't found a change in ADR, but however, as the editors say, maybe we need a bigger study. Maybe we need a, a different dose uh, compared, to, similar to the dose they've used in right, Asia. That's a good point. So, so I think at least I would like to think that this is a start point where we can uh, elaborate further later on. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I suspect other studies will be coming, but it'll be interesting to see if bigger studies replicate your results or not. That would be interesting to know, yeah. yes. In any event, though, congratulations on your paper. Thank you. Thank you very much.